Play action for Stroud. He's going to take a deep shot down the field. Nico Collins is there. He goes up, and he's got it. What a catch by Nico Collins. A 57-yard gain. We have raised expectations for the Houston Texans. I do think that they were very fortunate to win against the Indianapolis Colts on Sunday. I think they would have lost to a better team. But C.J. Stroud on Sunday in a game where he wasn't at his best, where he had a couple of careless throws, where he screwed up along with D'Amico Ryans and the referees that ended the first half situation, still had a couple of incredible plays. Specifically, that third and 11 throw that he made to Nico Collins in crunch time. And Joe, a weekend into the 2024 NFL campaign, he's lapped everybody, including Anthony Richardson, who, of mm -hmm. course, has glimpses of brilliance, but is still inaccurate. He has lapped the entire rookie class of last year's NFL draft. I think what's special I think about CJ is that he's lapped multiple classes he's lapped the trevor lawrence draft class mm. i mean that's not hard considering um I, I can't say lapped lapped means you have gone around a full entire circuit Ooh, you don't think he's lapped trevor lawrence no 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 we can't Already? say that we can't mm. say that they've both been to the second round of the playoffs lapped lapped joe is a lot i know but i think and i like trevor but like that loss this weekend to Miami where they were 14 at halftime. He, he hasn't lapped him. I know every person that loves the Texans yeah. in town, you want to dismiss the Jaguars and you want to dismiss Trevor Lawrence. He is ahead of Lawrence, in my opinion. He has not, but lapped, not him. lapped him. Okay, right. that's that's fair. That's fair. And now, to be fair, also from that draft class, there's only two starting quarterbacks left from the five that were taken in that draft. Just Trevor and Justin, but or Justin Fields. But what CJ has done and the way he's specifically with Bryce, like that's one thing with Anthony Richardson, he was taken after CJ. It was still the surprise of the draft. And when you look back at it, will Levis fall into the second round? What's happened to Bryce? I, I was looking at Todd McShay on Ryan Russillo's podcast today. I kind of agree with this take that I just feel bad for Bryce Young at this point. Like it, it just seems like he has no prayer. And it's not even his fault. But like this, the organization is just so terrible hmm. and the offensive line's not good. And maybe some of that's on Bryce too. I think his stature is not his fault, yeah. but it's a huge limitation. It I is. I don't think he's big enough to play quarterback. Yeah, but I'm with you. CJ has lapped the 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 rookie class from last year. And I guess Richardson's the closest one to him at this point, but he's pretty far behind. Richardson is a full lap behind Stroud because we're talking about Stroud as a potential top five quarterback. Richardson's fun to play with in Madden, you know? Bryce Young, who you mentioned, and that's what I want to talk about is the other quarterbacks this weekend. Bryce Young was 13 of 30 for 161 yards and two interceptions with Dave Canales in his first game as head coach of the Panthers. Canales, somebody who had worked with Oof. Baker Mayfield in Tampa Bay. Oh, he gets that smaller quarterback to look good. Maybe he'll do it with Bryce Young, but Baker Mayfield's continuing to look good with Tampa Bay. The Saints beat the Panthers 47-10. to 10. I think even Saints fans would tell you that they are very underwhelmed by what they have with Dennis Allen, and it's just more of the same for the Panthers. So to that McShay point, the Panthers are 1-40 in, in their last 41 games when the opponent scores at least 17. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're talking 17. They're really, really bad. But Young is not looking good. He can't overcome that situation, raise the situation around him to be better. So Stroud has lapped young. You got to see a lot of Will Levis on Sunday yeah. in the Bears game against the Titans, where Caleb Williams, who we'll talk about a little bit later, was not the reason that the Bears won. Joe, can you talk about Jeremy Branham's favorite quarterback in last year's draft class, Will Levis? And the pick six that he threw to your Bears. Yeah, before that pick six, like, at one point, Paul, I was like, I think I'm kind of back in. Oh, like, early man. in the game. And then it kind of unraveled. So, okay, so the end of the game, Will Levis and the Titans have the lead. And he's facing pressure. He needs to get a first down. And instead of just taking the sack or throwing it out of bounds, he just lollipopped it to the sideline. And it's, you know, five feet in front of the wide receiver and the Bears corner just got the easiest pick six of his life. I mean, it, Paul, it was, it's bad news. It was a bad news Bears play. Like it, it was something that you, you don't, I, I don't know. Like I, I've never seen a quarterback yeah. do something like that. 
and then he's on and then, well i think what makes it worse is he's he's then he's on his knees like standing on his knees with his hands on his head and just the visual watching it happen just knowing that he just made one of the most bonehead decisions he could ever make if you haven't seen that clip of will levis screwing up it's so fun. you have to see it it yeah. is all time i'm with you i couldn't believe it happened this is like what happens for every single sports movie it's the same generally where the team sucks at first comically and then they get good at the end and they win the championship mm -hmm. this happens every effing sports movie to the point where i don't even really enjoy sports movies anymore oh you're so cynical and jaded yes but that will levis interception you're right i i can't remember seeing one he underhand tossed it straight up into the air yeah i, I, I don't know just, what he was thinking i mean there's bears players after the game tweeting that tweeting the highlight saying dude just just take the sack next time like like they're like they're almost like feeling bad for him in that moment because it was such a remarkably dumb decision it was i think it's worse than the daniel jones uh preseason pick six to jalen petrie oh, man <laughs> like i think it's worse than that play and, and daniel jones was was pretty bad he's, someone, he's someone actually awful. asked that on the text line what was worse the levis pick six or the danny dimes almost safety picks oh that's funny i didn't realize that i think it was levis I think it was the Levis play, and the and the Daniel Jones play is really bad. Yeah, but at least it was preseason. There's no there's no need for the Will Levis play. Like there's None. just like the like the like the Bears defense said, just take the sack, man. Like there's that I I feel like Patrick Mahomes has ruined the brains for a lot of NFL players. I think so too. Where they think they the or a lot of quarterbacks, not just NFL quarterbacks, college quarterbacks too, where they think that they're Patrick Mahomes and they think they can throw left handed or underhanded. It's like, no, for the most time for the most part, just take the sack. It's just like Steph Curry with all the yes. kids that are bombing yeah. it from outside of the three point line. Everyone's taking a step and, back three now. And, and and look, I mean, don't take it from us or the players who were advising Will Levis afterwards. Brian Callahan, the new head coach of the Tennessee Titans, you can just hear the disgust because this is all because of that one play. It's all because of that <laughs> lateral, whatever the F pick six that he threw. Here's Brian Callahan talking about what the Titans offensive approach should have been in the second half, given that they were leading 17 to three at halftime, blew the lead and lost to the Bears. It was it was situational. I just uh, we were playing so good on defense that it's almost as if I mean if we just punted it on first and ten every time we might have won the game. Um, the way the way that you know we gave it away. So he's right. He's actually he right. is right. The Bears' offense didn't score a touchdown. Oh my god, it was bad. So uh, CJ Stroud has lapped all of last year's rookie class, mm. and on top of that, I, I feel like the three guys that we saw rookie quarterbacks on Sunday. I don't think they're there yet. Joe, you saw Caleb Williams firsthand. His numbers after the game, sub-100 passing, sub-50% completion percentage. I think it was like 13 to 27 for, what, 92, 93 yards? Yeah, 93 yards. It's not a good day. He, he. I thought of the three quarterbacks from what I saw from Washington and Denver. I thought he looked the most, like, composed. But he, you could tell it was too fast for him. It was it was way too fast for him because like and I know like I think with CJ sometimes we forget about you know week one last year but that was Baltimore like it was, it was Baltimore mm -hmm. this is this is Tennessee yeah like, like it it is different they're good and, defense but it's I'm I'm with you in that he was doing some of the same stuff yeah that not Will Levis was doing in that he was lateraling interceptions that were easily returned for touchdowns but he was trying to do some Mahomesian stuff where he's got the you know the under the yeah. submarine throws. He got the, remember like when Reggie Bush came into the NFL yes. and he tried to start doing all the stuff he was doing at USC Correct. and it just didn't work because everyone was so much faster. That's kind of what Caleb got hit with a hardcore reality check was like when he tried to do, tries to do those big boot plays. I mean, there was one that wasn't his fault, but he got a 19-yard sack. Yeah, I was, I was going to point out the 19-yard sack. It, you can't always bail out. This is, this is what's great about Stroud because Stroud can move. And this was something everyone wondered about at Ohio State. Well, well, why doesn't he move? We more? saw it because he's like starting the first Georgia. possession this weekend, right? Right. Like he he doesn't he doesn't move often because he had that scramble for a first down, but they called him down because if you go forward, it's the same as sliding, I guess, if you're a quarterback, which is interesting. But Stroud has a mindset of I'm gonna stay in the pocket and I'm gonna try to make a throw. And a lot of quarterbacks have gone away from that over the years. You, you gotta stand in the pocket and you leave it if it breaks down. And 
these young quarterbacks are going to figure that out. Caleb Williams, look, he has the ability to evade this rush, so that at the very least is good, but he's not going to be able to do it every single time. Yeah. Like he's Mahomes or like he's Aaron Rodgers, you know? You got to stay in there. Uh, Bo Nix, another rookie quarterback. Did you see the interception he threw against the Seahawks? I saw Rich Eisen afterwards complimenting Bo Nix's play, and I'm like, okay, Jets fan doesn't understand what a quarterback is. That's on brand. Bo Nix threw an interception into quadruple coverage on the left sideline. It's so right sideline. My bad. Uh, Adam Adam Archuleta. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Adam, Adam Archuleta. Ar- he said, "Oh no!" Oh no! Before he threw it. I can I can pull it up. <laughs> oh like, my god! He said, "Oh no!" Look at Before up. he threw it. I I mean, it, it, between that, the Daniel Jones interception and the Bo Nix interception, the Nix one is is the best throw of all those. But I mean, listen to this call. Five thirty-five left. They're down thirteen. Nix. Oh no! Has it? But it's intercepted. <laughs> I mean, like, okay, Caleb didn't throw for 100 yards. Bo Nixon hit his 100 yards passing until, like, his 30th pass of the game. Took him 30 pass attempts to get 100 yards. It's better than Deshaun Watson, for what it's worth, because Deshaun Watson, I Low bar. (laughs) But, yeah, again, we're talking low bar, and these guys look very far from it. There were some people who wanted the Texans to also tank last year, losers, so that they could get Caleb Williams. There were some people who wanted that. Yes, there were. There were. I, I, like, don't get a quarterback this time around. Draft the best player available and then get Caleb Williams next year. It's so crazy. I do not understand why people believe that they can accurately predict a college quarterback is going to be good. We should all give up on it. In fact, I think most people should just stop with the draft analyst before the draft starts because you're all wrong. Yeah, I mean, like, like how often? I always hate the the weight thing because it's always it always just changes. No, we thought last year was going to be, well, just wait. Don't hit Caleb Williams. Like, wait for Kate Klubnik, and then he was terrible. People thought this year maybe it would be Shador Sanders. Okay, but, like, let's be – I'm really excited about Caleb Williams. I think Caleb Williams is going to be a good quarterback in the NFL. As much as I like DJ Moore, I would do anything to go back in time and slap Ryan Poles in the face and say, do not trade the number one pick to the Carolina Panthers. Take C.J. Stroud. What if they take in Bryce Young? Well, then I would be even more sad. <laughs> Slap him like, on the face again. Yeah, but like, <laughs> yeah, you go back in time twice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we have to we'll, we'll just keep One going. Hey, Ryan, Ryan, you should it's, have known. It's like, end, and it's like in Avengers Infinity War when Doctor Strange is seeing all the different results of how the world ends. Like, <laughs> I see, one. like, there's only one. There's only one, and it should have been CJ. But, like, you never know. You never know when you're going to get a quarterback, and that's why you always take one. Because even though these guys, like, CJ's lapped all these guys, I do think all these franchises, like, have most of the time, made the right decision. The only one I really question, to be honest, is Denver. I don't see it with Bo Nix. I don't either. I never did, but... Yeah, maybe it's I can't get Auburn Bo Nix out of my mind. I, I mean, that's probably it. We like, saw him right there. That <laughs> that was exactly. Auburn Bo that's Auburn Bo Nix. That was Auburn Bo Nix. Uh, I think you can also have questions about Atlanta. Uh, just, I just have some questions about what Atlanta's doing with, with their quarterback situation. Oh, with Penix as the backup, with Cousins in as the starter. That was a rough showing by Atlanta. I, I'm pretty disappointed as someone who kind of bet heavy on Atlanta in my fantasy draft, but no one cares about that. Uh, the other rookie quarterback who played Jaden Daniels, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible, terrible, but he missed a lot of open guys that were open over the middle of the field, specifically Terry McLaurin. Um, he he's a run touchdown. First. Right. Yeah. He's de- he, you're right. He definitely looks like a run first guy. Right he is. Now. Yeah. He is. If the first read is not there, he is tucking. This was, run. this was Jaden Daniels at Arizona state. And when he first got to LSU, yes, this is why you're running like, LSU. He, he's not going to be this guy. Like, he's going to eventually go. I, I, I also, I really like Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Like, I, I kind of believe in Heisman Trophy, Jaden Daniels, but he looked uncomfortable um, in this game. One thing he needs to work on, because I, I watched a good amount of this game, uh, needs to figure out the helmet situation. Helmet was popping off a lot. Uh, basically, after every, every couple times he got tackled, his helmet would go off. And for someone who has had issues, um, I guess avoiding contact at LSU, <laughs> he seemed to invite contact a lot. And then now in the NFL, it's a different level of athlete. And now your helmet's coming off every play. Mm-hmm. Don't love that. Don't love that long term. That's Sean behind the glass. Joe George to my right. Galan and George, ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Imagine if some of the real draft nerds who follow the Texans got their way. And one, the Texans didn't draft CJ Stroud. And two, they didn't draft Caleb Williams. And three, we were hoping next year that the Texans would draft Shadur Sanders. Oh. 